We are doing Extra Life again this year where you can mash buttons, roll dice, play games, and help kids along the way. I hope you'll be a part of that with us. Stick around after the video for more information. Hey, Adam, can you hear me? Hello, I can. Can oh, you hear me? Yes, awesome. <laughs> so cool. What time is it in Australia? In, uh, oh, yeah. Wait, it's Australia, right? Not New Zealand. Yeah, Australia. Yeah, what time is it? Uh, it's 11.01 a.m. Oh, okay. Uh, 11.01 a.m. Okay, so this is not like a crazy time, but it's it would be the middle of your day, no, right? No, it actually will. Yep. But you work from home, is that right? Yeah, most most days. I do go into the office occasionally just to remind them I exist, but uh, I, I do like working from home. Nice. Um, it's really handy because the, the, the kids' school is just a couple of houses up the road, so I can be here when they get home. Oh, very cool. Um, before I forget, yeah. in case you didn't see it, in the, I, I retitled the channel and I also put a note on the Patreon page, but I'm recording this so that people who miss the meeting um, will mm -hmm. be able to hear whatever we talk about, okay? I did see that. So good. So you're not going to share like whatever the Australian equivalent of social security number is. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> ordinarily, call that a tax file number. What's that? You call that a tax file number. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes a lot more not sense. Not quite as as colorful and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Is now is it Thursday? It's Friday for you, right? Yeah, Friday morning. Okay, yeah, that's cool. So you are already almost previewing mm. the weekend for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Do you have any uh, fun plans? It's coming. Any fun plans for the weekend? Um, I probably need to do my next bulletin video because I think I was meant to do that last week, but um. Last week was my wife's birthday, so oh. we uh, took most of Saturday to celebrate that. Oh, cool. Feel good? Nice. Mm. What would you guys do for her birthday? So we went to uh, one of her favorite places. It's called the Tasmanian Food and Wine Conservatory. Um, it's like this this big building that, that some rich guy basically built to put his piano in uh, oh. in the 70s. And then a, a couple of years ago, uh, some people kind of, I don't know if they actually bought it or they just said, can we kind of rent this space and, and make use of it? So they turned it into a restaurant. Oh, wow. Is there still a piano in there? there yeah, there's a really nice looking grand piano right in the doorway. Oh, nice. Uh, I don't know if people are allowed to touch it or not, but <laughs> probably not. Well, it looks like we're going international yeah, it's, it's... now because I just saw Reed enter the, mm -hmm. uh, the voice chat. How are you doing, Reed? Yep. <clears throat> can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just said that Discord we're... Discord said it wasn't picking up my mic. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I guess you did. Um, yeah, I just, I just said that we've just gone international because, uh, uh, Reed has just popped in from China. Before I forget, um, uh, and, uh, hi, Gabriel, I also see Barbos and Joysticks there. Before I forget, if you didn't see this elsewhere, guys, I'm recording this, uh, chat to post for those who, uh, weren't able to make it to the meeting so they can hear anything that you know that we talk about so uh, don't share your private diary entries or your social security numbers yeah. Gabriel are you there your mic working um I think so it is awesome oh good so everybody can hear each other it sounds like hey I don't feel old anymore Woohoo! that's a great feeling oh and there's Tim <laughs> O'Donnell which uh, I assume that, like, I mean, oh, there he goes. He's gone. <laughs> oh, he was he was kind of on the fence. We were just on the phone earlier uh, having our monthly meeting and uh, was thinking with it, kid things might uh, prevent him from coming. So, But I see he's back now, but his headset is questionable, or I don't know what's going on. But, uh, Tim, you can pipe in whenever you want and are able. So, Gabriel, how are you doing? All right. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Adam is previewing the weekend for all... Well, I was going to say for all of us, uh, because it's um, 11 a.m. Friday for him, but 
What's the deal in China right now, Reed? Is it Friday or Thursday? I don't know what's going on. It is 9.05 on Friday. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So you guys are both kind of previewing the weekend. Although it's closer in sight for Adam. He's like... It is like, yeah, I'm a little bit closer. Yeah, it is on the horizon. You can almost taste it. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably have to taste it after lunch. Um, so, Gabriel, uh, how are you doing? Yes. Uh, not bad. I was a little nervous about signing on because I've never used Discord before. Oh, it was new to me, too. When Tim introduced it to me, I mean, I'd heard about it, and I knew it was what the cool kids did. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah. I was like, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, my wife was laughing at me last night because I told her I was like, "Hey, I want to do this," and but I don't know what I'm doing. And she started laughing because <laughs> I said it makes me feel old. That's a good place to be with your wives. I think wives like it when their husbands just confess as often as they want to that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, uh, before the time just vanishes away from us, um, I want to make sure that we are able to touch on the, the, the core intention of the meeting. Um, is there any questions you guys had or thoughts you want to share about the video I put up yesterday talking about the two basic directions that I'm considering for at least the immediate future? Or if you want to ask questions about what the long future scenario might look like for either one of those paths, anything that comes to mind. Did I, I break? I suppose one, one question. <laughs> I was going to say, did, did your mics all break at once or did I just like uh, uh, open the floor to a, a room full of geeks? <laughs> I, think, I think the latter. Did you open the room to a floor of geeks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, well, one question did occur to me, Hannah. Um, I, I was wanting to ask, uh, I guess, uh, what would be involved, you know, how much is involved in taking what you've got now and basically getting to the end of, so having completed the first episode of the storyteller, um, and I, I guess the secondary question from that is, um, is there a possibility of that, of the storyteller basically becoming uh, yet another pilot? where you just say, look, I'm just going to finish off the first one, here it is as an idea, and and then it could potentially be parked and, until funds are available. Or, or is there still quite a lot to get to that point? Um, well, my uh, great question, let me pull up my project files for that and remind myself of where I was at in the adaptation process. Current projects, uh, storyteller... First Samuel, um, and then let's see here. This would be the script here. Um, so I'm scrolling through and, and trying to remember what I've recorded so far. Um, I I think yes. Okay, so volume one, which would be roughly an hour in length. Um, the plan for volume one was to do the first. 12 chapters of 1st Samuel. And 1st Samuel, I, I've not um, completed adapting the script for the whole thing, but if I remember correctly, I'm pulling up my Bible here. I think it's 20-some chapters. Let me double check. Uh, oh, over that. It's uh, 31 chapters. 1st Samuel is 31 chapters. So, um, so, I mean, I could, you know, theoretically... Uh, release v just volume one of that, and it would be the first 12 chapters. And I, I chose chapter 12 because it did have an okay stopping point. There was a sense of, of the end of an era, and, but there was a potential um, looming shadow over, over Saul's kingship, because Samuel at the end of chapter 12, I believe, is, is basically saying, listen, God is going to be with you, and he's going to bless you if you obey him. But if you don't, then this and this and this is going to happen. You know, um, which you know almost kind of foreshadows. I imagine it was even the author's intention to to bring that out, um, so that uh, people could you know read reading this the history could get a you know a sense of what's coming. Um, so um, it would feel in that regard from a story standpoint 
it would feel a bit like the first season of a TV show that kind of wraps things up, but definitely does not wrap a number of things up, you know? Um, now, as far as, like, releasing that as a pilot, um, that would be hard to do. That would take a lot of work to do, because with all the pilots that I'm going to be releasing, um, they are basically intended to represent, with maybe just a few minor exceptions, what the ongoing product would be, what it would sound like and look like and feel like and stuff like that. Um, and, and a major component in my vision for the Storyteller series that makes it what it is, and that also makes like the Spirit Blade trilogy what it is, is that licensed music. Um, mm. And that's what, uh, that's where really most of the budget for those things comes, is in purchasing that high quality, cinematic sounding licensed music. Everything else, I mean, I, it, there, I do require money to buy sound effects, but I haven't really had to make a serious update to my sound effects library in over a decade because I, I just made a front-loaded investment in a sound effects library t to do a bunch of sci-fi and stuff like that. So I just had to buy a few little sound effects here and there, and those are like maybe five to ten bucks a pop, you know, on now and then. And most times I don't have to do anything like that. I can get free ones online or I can manufacture my own. So... Really, um, it's, you know, it can be, for the, for a World of Shadows, I can't remember now, it was at least a thousand dollars, maybe closer to two thousand to, uh, to get to, for the score of that whole thing. Um, so to, to properly represent even just the first hour of, uh, of the Storyteller series, I would need to essentially purchase most of the, music that I would pr use for the entire book of First Samuel. The reason for that mm -hmm. is, as I did with the Spirit Blade trilogy, I will buy um, bits of scoring and then I'll establish themes. So there'll be a theme for the liberation, you know? Um, and then that theme, I won't just use it in one scene, I will use it whenever we come back to the liberation base. I'll use that same track or some portion of that track or something like that. And so... Um, uh, basically, there would be a bunch of like themes that would be established in this first one-hour volume of the uh, of the portion of the storyteller series that is First Samuel, you know. Um, and so th th it would be—I I don't know if it would be as much as half of the music um, that I would need to to buy for all of my plans for First Samuel, but it might be that. It might even be more. I mean, it. I, I'd have to run the numbers on that. But what I could do that I thought about doing and just didn't mention in the video um, is, well, I was actually not thinking of doing this in the pilot stage, uh, but I was thinking of, you know, if we didn't go forward with the Storyteller series, I would st still gladly release what I've completed of the scenes in First Samuel. And there's a good chunk of, like, the, I want to say the first five, maybe as much as first seven scenes or something, that have um, all the dialogue and the different character voices layered in, and a lot, in, in some cases, all of the sound effects layered in as well. It would just be missing uh, the music, you know. Um, and so I was planning on, you know, just uh, as a thank you to those who did support the vision of the Storyteller series, putting that out there and letting them have that and just enjoy it to whatever the degree they, they, they can. But, um, but... Mentioning the idea of a pilot, um, I could uh, I could release those um, along with the in, during the pilot uh, season if we go that route, and maybe that would give people a a better idea and help cast vision. And then I would want to refer them back to that short sample that I did like a year or so ago um, that mm -hmm. had which was the scene with David slaying Goliath, going out to fight Goliath. That had that was. That had a full. That had music in there. It was recycled music that I'd used at some point in one other, some other audio drama. But it still gave a sense of you know what that final polished product would kind of sound like, um, as you know in as as a vertical slice as they call it in video gaming, um, of what that would you know potentially look like as the finished product. So. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, but I, yeah, I, I agree uh, that what you're describing um, is, is what makes the storyteller special. It, it's it's the that original music that 
and the, the sounds and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and you know, I had mentioned at one time during like a journal entry, like this potential scenario of, um, you know, as a as a half measure until the full thing could be produced, release the storyteller series as something that you know had all the different voice characterizations, but didn't have sound effects and music, and uh, you know, even as I was putting that out there, I was like that you know, it's it's really lacking the, the 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 final things that you know that well the, with the music lacking especially but especially because you know well both music and sound effects if those are missing that's like the deal that's like what makes it what it is in my head you know and so to put that out there is kind of a stopgap until the full thing can be funded um you know you commented adam that like yeah i mean that uh, in a comment um, one, below that i think when i posted that journal entry that yeah that kind of robs it of the geek appeal or you said something along those lines and mm -hmm. and i was like yeah it's it totally does and so that's why i you know didn't even mention that route as a possibility when i put that video up yesterday um because as i told tim on the phone earlier today as we were talking about the same idea that you know no the storyteller series is um a thing that has not just voice characterizations, but f all the sound effects I want to have in there and all the music that I want to have in there, you know? And I'm either going to do that or I'm not, you know? Because um, there are increasingly, and I think only increasingly as more time passes, there are all kinds of audio Bible options out there, many of them free, that people can take advantage of. So there's no reason for me to tread the same ground. Makes sense to me. What did you guys think? Um, and jump in anytime if you want to go back to a previous topic or a different topic or whatever. Um, I'm just stirring the pot a little bit here. What did you guys think of the those seven ideas that I put out in that video? Um, did any of them jump out to you? <clears throat> For me, Peter, um, I, I shot you an email, so you're probably going to read this in the morning. Um, I loved the campfire. Was it campfire quest? I yeah. loved that idea. Uh, that sounded very entertaining and something that I would definitely love to listen to, like on the on the way to work, on the way home from work. Uh, considering I have like a 35 minute, 40 minute drive. Oh. Um, and also all of the video game stuff that you mentioned, the the more reviews and the and the let's plays, uh, both of those two ideas sounded awesome to me because those are up my sort of alley of, of hobbies and and things and what I've gotten the most out of through Christian Geek Central. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Um, I too am I'm talking to the computer. Sorry, <laughs> distracted my wife. Um, <laughs> I too am most interested in the campfire, the campfire chat or campfire quest. Yeah. Um, I think that sounds pretty cool. I, I would say, I was just looking at him just now, and I'd say like in order of most interested to least interested, I would say campfire. Quest, and then after that, um, a regular Essential Issues thing, okay. episodes, and then um, the, wor the World of Shadows Archive, and the movie Watch Along Commentary, number four, and then, uh, to be honest, t TV show, Tabletop gaming and video game content are kind of interchangeable. Those are, those are the ones that I'm not that interested in. Okay. That's really good to hear. Uh, that's because I would not have suspected. I remember a while back you expressing interest in the uh, World of Shadows um, archive. But when I put that one up there, and what was the other one? And Essential Issues. I was like, these are going to be the bottom. There's nobody that's going to like put these anywhere near the top of <laughs> their list, but I put them on there anyway. So that's really, I'm glad you spoke up and shared that. <laughs> hey, it's Nathan Norman. Oh, no, he's gone. <laughs> he was here for a second. 
Yeah, but, but why is Santa had to get another tweet? He'll be back. Okay. Is there any water in the You can drink it. Yeah, and there's so much on that list. That's that's why I I um wanted to yeah. not basically put those out there as like you asking you guys to sort through those. Although I love that you're you've thought enough to kind of have an idea of, in your mind, Reed. Um, but yeah, what, what I'm thinking, I don't know what the plan would be, but if we go the um, uh, ongoing content route instead of the storyteller route, I would find some way to allow everyone to vote that would allow them to express some kind of ranking, if possible, of maybe like vote for like their top three or two or something. I don't know. I, I'm going to have to troubleshoot that, but I'm, I was like, let's cross that bridge when we come to it. So... Um, What do you hope? Adam or Tim, did uh, did any of those seven ideas I put out there, assuming you watched the video, I don't know if you had time to watch it or not, uh, jump out to you? I thought uh, all the, the ideas all sounded fun. Uh, I, I think I mentioned before uh, in the comment that the Campfire Chat um, has especially uh, captured my imagination. Uh, so that that's the one of the seven that I'm kind of most excited about. Um, I think it would uh, it would fit really well with your your style of storytelling, Peter. And um, yeah, so I'd be very keen to hear that as well. Um, I haven't really uh, gone as as deep in thought as Reed has in terms of ranking them all, but uh, yeah, the the campfire chats was definitely at the top of my list of those. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's. I, I would say if there's one of the ideas that as I've kind of mused about these, this whole idea of changing course in audio journal entries for the last few months, that does, there, that does seem to have been a common thing that uh, several uh, patrons have called out as, as being interesting. And, um, and maybe part of that's because it's, it's one of the more unique things on the list. You know, everything else is kind of like more, more of what I've done before, you know, um, but uh, for the for the most part, but uh, um, but I yeah I I do um, I I am really jazzed about that idea. Um, if we were to pursue that, uh, for you know one of the things that appealed to me about the storyteller series way back when I first started thinking about it is that I wouldn't have to write you know because I I uh, always felt and still feel like the writing of of um, both the Spirit Blade trilogy and that first episode of Pilgrim's Progress was really the the weakest part of of those projects that uh, I just you know I I think I do okay but um, there's plenty of holes in my uh, ability as a as a writer particularly as as uh, in terms of story structure because that's not something that I'm especially interested in as you guys probably know from my reviews I like character driven stuff I like um, seeing fleshed out characters interact with each other and um, that was really the as as you maybe were alluding to, Adam. That was really one of the major appeals for uh, mm. Campfire uh, Quest. Is I don't have to have this great um, story structure for like this mission that they're going to go on, and like the you know having a rise and fall in tension from like the different obstacles that they face and stuff. You know, there, there's there's all these little pacing issues that when you're just doing something that's, you know, 20 minutes, uh, it, you know, or, or maybe 30 minutes at most. Um, it, and, and also that's a lighter and more comical nature than something that you're at really asking the audience to take primarily seriously. Uh, there's, I feel like there's less burden on the structure of the story, you know, like when you go and see some dumb comedy, you know, um, you're not expecting this, you know, masterful, story structure in the same way that you would if you're, you go to watch a mystery or a suspense movie or even an action movie, you know. Um, and so uh, I was really drawn to the idea of, uh, oh, what, what if it was just about them sitting around and in kind of the scattered way that people, you know, tend to talk, they were recalling events, maybe not always in chronological order, just talking about the events of the, their adventuring of the day as the, as the bard talks through it the way he remembers it and the, the other people can correct him or, you know, whatever, however they want to chime in, you know, and uh, 
uh, and then have those characters just kind of like knock heads given their different worldviews, their different personalities and temperaments and strengths and weaknesses and stuff. Um, there will still be, you know, kind of some ebb and flow that I'll want to have, you know, so there's definitely some still like structural things involved, but not near as much as in, you know, uh, like a proper story story, you know, and so, um, so that's, um, that's one reason why I not only felt comfortable with the idea, uh, but felt a little bit drawn to it. Um, yeah. Um, if you, if you guys were t kind of, I'm not asking you to commit to anything right now, but if you were kind of leaning one way or the other, um, where, where would you be leaning? Would you be leaning toward, uh, storyteller or expanded content? Um, you, you kind of asked me this, uh, what is it on the August discord chat and I've thought about it a bit more. I think I would lean towards. I think I would lean towards the expanded content option. First of all, I remember on that podcast you sort of explained that, and then I said, "Okay, you sold me." Um, mm. So he sort of sold me on it back then. <laughs> but um, a lot of it, I was I was thinking about it, and it's sort of like what you said before, and how you said like there's a million audio bibles out there, and some a lot of them are free. And I sort of feel like that as far, like, not to, you know, not to disparage your dream of the storyteller thing or anything. No, not at all. But I sort of feel like I already have audio Bibles, and I'm not really looking for more. Yeah. Um, so even, even, with the, even with the sound effects and the voice acting, it's still an audio Bible to me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, yeah, um, well, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's and that's part of the concept is that it not be an adaptation, um, like in the form of a script of the Bible. I really wanted in the concept that I originally created, I just wanted to give people the word, you know. Um, and so you're absolutely right. That is uh, as the essence of the of the concept is that it is an audio Bible. So yeah, I guess I I lean the other way. Okay, yeah, good to know. You really, you really, so, you really sold me on the campfire quest thing. <laughs> I don't mind that. Next, I think uh, for me, uh, Peter would be man. I'm sold on both. If I remember right, I think you put out at one point kind of a sample of the Storyteller series. Um, and I'm not kidding. When I listened to it, I got goosebumps. And mm -hmm. I was like, this is this is an, an interpretation of uh, the Bible that I've never experienced before. And I loved it. Oh, thanks. Man. But I also, so whenever that does get uh, greenlit, you know, for more, uh, and you can fully work on it. That'd be awesome. Um, but I also am highly interested in the extended content. Um, I just want to see Christian Geek Central continue to thrive and, and do good and, and just grow. So, I mean, I'm okay with both. All right. Thanks, man. Anybody else have any leanings? Yeah, Peter, I, I think, um, like, going back to something we talked about earlier today, uh, um, seeing it as a point of view of I'm, I'm leaning towards the expanded content stuff um, for the purpose of being able to eventually do the, the storyteller stuff in the future, you know, because the expanded content uh, stuff um hopefully we'll we'll grow our audience so that we will be able to do uh storytelling in the future and do it right not do it in a, a less than what you imagined way 
Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was had it in my head. I was like, oh, I should I should bring that up at some point. Um, that yeah, I said in the video that like um, uh, choose you know choosing extend you know extended content or expanded. Con I need like a concise way. I don't know if I'll choose extended or expanded content, but whatever. Choosing that doesn't mean burning the bridge toward the storyteller. I said that in the video, but what I didn't say in the video is is exactly what you're bringing up, Tim. Is that there is potential um, for expanded content, um, especially expanded content that is scratching itches that are not currently being scratched by other content I'm producing, that that would grow our audience um, who would then, you know, uh, add to our number of patrons and, um, and add to the number of patrons that are also interested, but maybe not as interested, but also interested in the idea of the Storyteller series um, you know, to some extent being, uh, you know, produced. So, yeah, I, I absolutely see that uh, potential as well. You know, I, for, uh, for as long as I've been doing this, over the years, I've tried various things here and there to try and figure out what the secret sauce is. And I've talked about this in some audio journal entries before. Like, what's the secret sauce to, like, get... Christian Geek Central out there, or Spirit Blade Productions out there, so people know about it, so people are drawn to it. What is the social media thing? What is the, you know, uh, uh, content collaboration thing with other Christian creator things? Or what is, what's the thing? What's the secret sauce? Or if it's more than one ingredient, which ones are the vital ingredients? Because I don't have time to do them all or experiment with them all. And, um, and there comes a point where I'm like, I don't know what the secret sauce is. I just, um, I don't believe in the old uh, Field of Dreams motto, if you build it, they will come. I do think people need to know that it exists <laughs> to come to it. And that was just a convenient element of that movie, if any of you guys have seen that. Um, but I do think that there is a lot of strength in building it. Um, and... You know, when, when people do find Christian Geek Central, it's not at all uncommon for me to see in the YouTube comments something along the lines of, wow, how did I never know about this before? Or, wow, you should have so many, subscri so many more subscribers than you do or whatever. So when people do find this content, they really seem to latch onto it, you know. Um, and that is, uh, I think, even more important to me than figuring out the secret sauce of, of marketing and stuff. And, uh, uh, and I think through word of mouth, that makes a big difference as well. I'm kind of rambling. I don't know where I was going with this whole thing, but, um, yeah, I'll just stop talking now. <laughs> I, mm. I knew where I was going when I yeah. started. <laughs> uh, I, I agree with, with what, what you and Tim have just been saying, Peter. Um, I think in a lot of ways that the only real, um, secret sauce is, um, hard work and patience. It does take a long time to build a platform. Hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I do agree that also you can't just kind of build something hidden in secret and, and wait because people won't find it in today's market. Uh, one of the, the, the big things, especially in the, in the author community, is uh, paid advertising, um, which everyone is basically falling back on because... Um, yeah, social media has changed a lot and you don't get the visibility anymore. Hmm. Um, that obviously costs money, <laughs> which is yeah, an issue. Well. But, um, but yeah, um, I, th I think um, – what am I trying to say here? Yeah, I mean, c continuing to, to make different kinds of content. I mean, the, the more hooks you get in the ocean, the more likely you are to get a bite on a fish. Mm -hmm. Um. So the, my kind of leaning is, is yeah, let's let's go to the expanded um, content, and over time that will help um, Christian Geek Central grow, um, which in turn, you know, there's always going to be a very small percentage of your overall audience that are going to go on something like Patreon. Um, but if you grow the audience, you grow the Patreon, and yeah, I th I think the storyteller has its place. Um, but yeah, my, my kind of leaning is to kind of put that in God's hands and, and wait for God's timing and in, in the meantime, um, get some stuff out there to, to keep, keep the growing process happening so that when, 
when it is time, then um, the funds will be there and, and that can all come together. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not at all opposed to that. I, I think that, as I've mentioned maybe in some journal entries, I've been getting better over the years. I haven't mastered it by any stretch. But getting better over the years at just kind of like setting a course but keeping a loose grip on the wheel. You know, I mean, God mm. has um, changed my direction so many times when I thought, you know, this is it. This is what God has given for me to do. And I'll start pursuing it. I'll pursue it for a while. And then uh, at some point, it just does not make any sense to continue anymore. Um, and there'll be something else. And, you know, one thing that I said to Tim on the phone today that I wanted to, to also bring up here is um, that an advantage that, um, at least for now, that the expanded content route has... Um, is that it's much more nimble. You know, I mentioned in that video that we could change what content I produce from, uh, you know, season to season or even month to month, you know, if we really want, if the patrons really wanted a lot of variety, you know. Um, and, you know, for a whole year, I could hit every one of those ideas, some of them twice, you know, uh, if we really wanted, you know, to just have a potpourri of this, uh, you know, new new types of content. Um, and, uh, and also with ongoing content, even if I was say doing, you know, the campfire quest, because that was just overwhelmingly what people wanted me to do every month is campfire quest. Well, even just doing that alone, um, I have the ability month to month to write a new script that has new themes embedded in it that are responding to what I'm hearing you guys going through in the community or, excuse me, or what things are uh, happening in the larger world of geekery, you know, what issues are, are you know, uh, more relevant, you know. Whereas with the Storyteller series, um, what I would do with that, like I did with, you know, at the outset, I was like, okay, well, what would be a great book of the Bible for geeks to start with? And I thought, well, the closest thing I can think of in the Bible to a geek is an artist. Um, a creative person, because so many geeks um, are creative artists of some kind, and the rest are at the very least imaginative, you know? Um, and so they're creative in that sense. And, and the most famous creative person in the Bible is King David, you know? And so I thought, well, let's to do a story about an artist, you know, who maybe even had some geeky qualities, you know? Um, so I set that course, uh, and yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily like, I could do six months of for Samuel, and then I was even thinking of, like, for the next installment, it would be a collection of New Testament books, you know, and then I would go back, you know, to 1 Samuel, so that by the end of one year, you would have the whole, you know, first volume, or all of 1 Samuel, but anyway, that's still a heck of a commitment, to commit to a course and say, okay, this is, you know, what I think would really benefit the geek community or the Christian Geek Central community, um, and I, it's just not as agile, you know. Um, and, and of course, you know, the advantage of the Storyteller series is that it is, um, with only a very conservative paraphrase, um, God's Word as translated into English, you know. And that's going to be uh, far superior to anything that I would write um, in terms of its uh, richness and depth and ability to, in the long term, impact uh, a person's life. Uh, but um, on a more immediate level, I certainly have much more ability to speak to the heart of the geek and the issues that the geek is facing, you know, by doing month-to-month, uh, -month, you know, content. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really apples, it's really apples and oranges, but, uh, but that, that is certainly an element that would be unique to the expanded content route. Did you say something, Reed? Sorry. Yeah, I said, hmm, which means <laughs> I don't have anything to add. Yeah, that's like... That what summed I, it up pretty well. It's what I call the non-committal mm. You know, like when you listen to somebody like... Uh, I think if you guys, if any guys watched or listened to my uh, interview with Colin Moriarty, I'm sure I must have busted out the non-committal mm a few times, you know, when, when you're talking to somebody and sometimes you can use it when... Um, 
they say something that you're pretty sure you disagree with but you don't know exactly how to respond or it could be it's something that you're not sure what you think about so you don't want to commit one way or the other or sometimes you just want to keep them guessing you don't want to commit one way or the other <laughs> openly so you just give a good hmm hmm <laughs> see i would i would call I would call what I just did a committal mm, because in China, that's sort of how people respond to things when they're agreeing. They go, oh. mm. they don't really say, mm, a lot of times they say, mm. oh, okay. because like, mm, it means yes, or uh-huh, or something like that. So yeah, that was sort of what I was. You know, I think you're onto something because um, there's, uh, the, then China has something in common with um, uh, Christian church culture, you know, because you know, when you've, when you hear somebody like when you're in a prayer, like you're praying in a circle, big group prayer, you know, and somebody prays something that really yeah. speaks to somebody else, what are you going to hear? You're going to hear, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> or, or a, a part of a sermon, you know, mm, you know. <laughs> mm. So maybe, maybe what I'm thinking of is more of a, a non committal hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I've heard you, I've heard you do that a few times. Okay. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a non-committal hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> clarifying my commitment. Um, well, anything else? Anything else on, on this topic of the fork in the road? We can just blab about whatever and come back to it if somebody thinks of something too. That's fine. Um, well, nobody else is saying anything, so I will say, th I will say words. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was afraid that, I was afraid after, after like the last two Discord chats that I felt like I completely took over. Um, oh. <laughs> nah. that I, I was going to come into this one and I was going to be like, okay, don't try to take over. Don't try to take over. <laughs> and now nobody's talking. So it's like, I got to do something. <laughs> um. But I don't have much to say unless you want to start talking about Batman again. Um, I can talk about Batman. Whatever you guys want to talk about, I'm I'm good. I mean, I've pretty much said all. I've pretty much said everything I I had been thinking of regarding the direction. Okay. Of the thing, and I think um, I think was it Tim when Tim was talking about the how to expand the channel and use the ongoing content to help expand so that you can get to a place where you can do the storyteller series the right way. I hadn't even thought of that. And I think that that's really, what's the word I want to say? I, that, that's a good idea, hmm. yeah. a good perspective on the whole thing too. Hmm. Adam, were you going to say something? Yeah, I never thought You're not of that angle. <laughs> um, the angle to okay, what content is going to be the best to grow uh, the community? I was just, I watched your video and I was like, all right, what would I be most interested in? Um, as to what would grow the community the, the most, I have no idea. I'd be more kind of like what you said, Peter, you've had kind of a roadmap, but God has taking you away from that roadmap so many times and led you into much a much better place. Hmm. Um, so I think whatever course you take, uh, God's going to bless it and uh, go from there. Well, that's, that's the hope. That's, I want to be, you know, and that's why I do something like this to just kind of get, uh, get other minds and, and hearts that are, seek in the spirit to just kind of give their reactions and thoughts um because yeah i just want to be ultimately on the same page that god is on with all this um and of course that's you know of, of course that's what we all want i think so uh yeah but f puzzling through and figuring that out can be a challenge <laughs> Yeah, especially like I'm definitely not the kind of person who knows how marketing would work. So, oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, I would, 
I mean, you and you and Tim, I guess, have been doing this certainly longer than I've ever tried doing anything that involved marketing, which is probably very few things. Well, um, Tim has more insight so to, almost, to trends and you know what the cool kids are into. You know, I'm yeah, I, I that's that's not me at all. <laughs> oh my well, gosh, I, I would defer to him on that. Yeah, yeah. If I man, if I was not like doing the type of work I'm doing, I don't even know if I would have a Facebook account um, or any kind of social media account. It just does not interest me at all. <laughs> and the only the only way I was able to eventually kind of like see any you know reason to do anything with Twitter was when I was like, oh, if I use this as kind of like a news feed to fulfill that part of Christian Geek Central, um, I could see purpose in Twitter. <laughs> oh, lo and behold, you know. <laughs> um, oh, that reminded me of something. What was there you that? Go. What was I just thinking of? Ugh, oh, dang it, it's gone. Um, marketing? I don't know. I'm trying to yeah. think of a word that could jog your memory. I know. I, I play <laughs> that same game with my wife. <laughs> and she nods and says, yes, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Dang it. Has worked with me in the past when somebody says things to me, and then I'm like, "Oh, that's what it was." But <laughs> it doesn't usually work when I'm on the other side. Yeah, I had. Let's see, I had my upcoming content schedule thing pulled up. Maybe that rang a bell or something. Oh, I remember what it was now. Um, this is some something that uh, uh, this is kind of off topic, but I'll you know since you're here, I'll let you guys know about it. Um, Tim and I in our the main topic of our meeting today was um, the topic of a new Christian Geek Central website, um, which is something that uh, I could definitely move forward with if we don't do the storyteller series, but I could probably move forward with it um, in the not too distant future, even if I did continue saving for the storyteller. It would basically be an extra 180 bucks a year that I would add to the budget um, so that we could get a real proper Christian Geek Central site uh, because I've got, you know, I launched this podcast in 2007 so I've got like over a decade of content, you know, of reviews and um, that were once in text form and then moved on to video form and podcast episodes. I mean, there's so much content about so many different things relevant to Christian geeks that um, it's really long past time for a version of the Christian Geek Central site that can help people navigate to the thing that they're interested in, you know, and find easily, you know, um, like even like people will ask me questions that are like these great questions. And one thing I love being able to do is is have like a video that I've made like on the subject of, you know, is is it you know wrong to be an evil character in games? So I got a video on that, you know, or what do you think about sex and nudity and those kinds of issues? I got two videos on that, you know. Um, and so I can give them that link and that's so cool to, to be able to do that now at this point in my uh, ministry timeline. And I just think it would be even more cool for them to have a website where they wouldn't have to go to the bother of typing out a question and waiting for me to get back to them. They would be able to easily browse and find the topic that they're, you know, interested in, um, which is something that you just can't do, certainly not on the Christian Geek Central site, and even with the use of playlists on YouTube, it's, it's pretty limited. So, um, so anyway, just give you guys the heads up that that is what Tim and I have been talking about for a good while. Um, over a year, and uh, among other things, but it's really starting to uh, formulate and become more real and solid now. So uh, it could be something that I, I imagine once you know the the poll is finished and I know which route we're going in the fork in the road, um, then I'll be able to say, okay, so here's what I here's the timetable for when I can get that you know website going. So All right. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. I, I mean, years ago, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been excited at all about like 
things being organized a certain way. <laughs> That's much more of my, my wife's thing. But, you know, now when I've made so much content over the years, I think about just the how, you know, it could really be leveraged um, so much more effectively than it than it is now. Um, so, yeah, that's that's definitely exciting to me. But, yeah, like I said, that's we're going to make that happen either way. I'm interested to see how that works out then. Um, I mean, either way, so I don't need a position on it. I can just say, yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> right. I mean, you can have a position. You can say, Peter, that, that sounds like a waste of your resources right now. I mean, that's, I'm open to that. I am open to knowing that. <laughs> do, 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 do. It, it sounds like a good idea to me, um, doing, a, doing an update of the website. Uh, I think there could be a lot of advantages from it. Just in terms of discoverability. Oh yeah, you cut out there, but you probably I assume you said something like from an SEO standpoint or something? Yeah, yeah. Just 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 the discovery of the content, I think uh, an updated website uh would be very helpful in that regard. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, well we got close to ten minutes. What 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 else you guys what's in your what's on your minds? Any geeky stuff you're excited about or you just experience that you're disappointed in or something old that you've been doing, you know, some uh, old movie or game you've been into lately? What's geeky that's on your mind? I'm trying I am trying to finish Days Gone. Oh, I you haven't finished it yet. I um no, I beat the campaign. The main story, but kind of like similar to the how Arkham Knight, Batman Arkham Knight was set up. There's a true ending that oh. you have to get. You have to get 100% completion on all of the storylines, um, and there are. Oh man, I'd bet you there's close to 20, and I've got one, two, three. Maybe four left to go, and one of them is fighting, killing every horde in the game of wow. the Freakers. And there's 40 hordes, and I'm 30% complete. Wow. You know, I don't want to step on your toes, but I'm a pretty awesome gamer, and I know a trick to get you that uh, true ending. It's on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> I know, but I, have to, I feel like I have to earn it. No, so I know. I'm I messing have, with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I already know kind of what happens in the true ending because YouTube, when I was scrolling through one day, I was like, oh, no, 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 and I clicked away as fast as I could. I hate that. Um, but I think I got a little hint of that. Well, YouTube also spoiled a part of the new God of War game for me that made me really mad. Oh. Um, but... Uh, it wasn't like a huge story beat, but it would have been just absolutely cool for me to experience that without first seeing it on YouTube. Yeah. Hmm. And what you mean? I played, I used to play, went, yeah, slow down. Back when I played GameCube and stuff like that all the time, shows how old, how long it's been since I played video games. Um, there were some, there were some games like that where it's like, you got this ending, now go get this ending and this ending and this ending, and then you get them all together, and then you can see the final, not even the, see the final ending. You got to go through every storyline and, and, like, beat every path, and then you get to play, like, the final level and see the final ending. Of course, then you're left wondering, which of the endings I saw before is canon now? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> what a pain. <laughs> We'll say that the, when when I when I was doing it with like Shadow the Hedgehog, it wasn't as hard as like killing twenty hordes or whatever you just said. Yeah, and it's you could have I could have tried to beat the hordes while I was playing through the main campaign, but when you first start Days Gone and for the longest time you are not equipped to take on a horde of of these freakers if you haven't played it basically imagine the zombies from world war z and that's what these are and they uh. 
like the smallest horde is like 50, but I just took on a horde the other night that was probably easily 500 or more of these things. And they flow kind of like a river and they, and some of them will branch off and actually like try to surround you. And, um, you can like run around and set up traps depending on where the, the horde is at. Some of them have been really fun and some of them are just like a intense, I'm going to run around and try to kill as many of them as I can <laughs> and then run away until they quit chasing me and then go back in again to get them. There's a new game plus for that. I don't know. I just heard that they unlocked that. Are you thinking you'll do that after you finish the, the main deal? Um, I don't, I don't know. Probably at some point down the road in, um, if any of you guys did watch my former YouTube channel, um, I really like the, the blend of story and gameplay. So the, um, I am going to start a new YouTube channel, but it's going to be way less, way less pressure on myself. The story of Days Gone, I thought, was very, very good, but it just seemed like it wasn't pieced together real well. Hmm. So it would, I would probably have to be away from it for <clears throat> a long time before I went back into it. Yeah, that makes sense. And after watching Carnival Row, I'm worried about the Netflix Witcher series. Not that it's going to be bad, but... You mean for the, gonna... the nudity and sexuality, that kind of stuff? Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, Holly and I have only watched... We've gotten maybe as far as the third episode. We're taking it slow because it's it's kind of... I'm, a, I'm kind of on her schedule. When we find a show that we both like enough to, you know, want to watch together, then I try to take that at her pace, but... Uh, um, it's definitely been disappointing, you know, th them dipping back to that. Um, you know, I don't want to say that I'm, you know, grateful that it's not as bad as, you know, Game of Thrones, you know, but there is some element of that, you know. Um, but it's yeah. it's not for sure. I mean, only three episodes in. It's not a for sure thing that we'll finish the, the season. I don't know. But I mean, like, apart from those issues, uh, we... I've, I've definitely been enjoying it. I know Holly has too, but I think me more so than Holly. I, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And um, that type of content, except for me going, uh, not again. And, you know, fast forwarding, which overall, I think it was from what I saw of game of Thrones, which was four episodes, m much more sporadic. Hmm. Um, and there was a few episodes that I watched at Carnival Row that had nothing in it. And I was like, okay, cool. Okay. I've been kind of binge watching the Americans and, uh, they are, they are much less likely to do like actual technical nudity, at least frontal female nudity. I'm not sure if there's been any in the show, but they, but they get into sex scenes. It's like, okay, it's, it's stare at the thumbnail time while I, you know, speed through the thumbnail, you know, but that's, yeah, yeah it's lame. I, One I, good thing about the Witcher, my, Margaret, my wife, she is, uh, she's going to watch it with me because we're both like huge fantasy people. We love the Lord of the Rings and oh, cool. the, yes, we, lo we love the Hobbit movies. Um, That's all right. And Harry Potter. And she watched the trailer for The Witcher and was like, oh, that's, she's like, that looks really good because she loved watching me play The Witcher 3. She oh. loved that story. Um, and she's like, is it going to be creepy? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, well, if it's not creepy, I want to watch it with you. And I think I'll feel much better with her, like, in the room, you know. I'll sure. just be like, all right, you fast forward. I'm going to look down, you yep. know. Yep. Here's my hope. I, You know, um, I was thinking about this because I'm – if the name Cap Stewart sounds familiar to you, that's a, a guy who writes specifically on the topic of um, nudity and sexuality in Hollywood – um, and kind of like does expose articles, you know, on what's going on there. And, and it's it's really good stuff. And he's working on a, um, basically a Bible study course uh, curriculum. And he asked me to be one of his test readers. I just finished doing that and sent it back to him today. So this has really been on my mind. And um, one thing that, as I was pondering this issue, that I realized, I and I hope will be the case, is when I look at my 
YouTube analytics, I can tell when people stop watching at, at certain points, you know? Um, and I'm thinking to myself, man, if YouTube makes those analytic uh, bits of information available to YouTube users, then I have to believe that Netflix and Amazon and streaming services like that, they have data, you know, back there that is tracking that kind of thing. And so I'm thinking to myself, I, I wonder, I, they, they have to know, hopefully there will be, you know, some data that they're getting that, that helps them realize, oh, you know what, um, we don't need to put nudity in here because a, a significant number of people are skipping that. You know, I, I've always kind of felt like, well, crap, um, when people make rated R movies, like I remember the, the Conan movie with um, uh, Momoa, Jason Momoa. I, I watched a behind-the-scenes behind feature the of that, and he was that. talking about how, you know, we're going to make uh, a, a Conan movie for adults, you know. And then similarly, and, and of course it had, uh, I think, language, but certainly violence and, and some uh, brief nudity in there. And then, like, what's the, the Deadpool? Deadpool. You know, it's like when they went for the R rating, it's like we're going to do everything that a movie is rated R for because we can, you know. And... I, I'm hoping that Hollywood will realize that there are nuanced audiences and there there are some people that were, will be totally fine with violence and they're not okay with sexuality and nudity. And I'm certain, you know, vice versa in, in some cases, you know. But I'm hoping that somehow that data that they have to be collecting, somebody has to be collecting that, will uh, influence how some of these movies and shows are made. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's a, that's a very, very interesting, interesting point. It, well, it's still speculation because I don't know, but I'm just, I'm just assuming, you know, that like, unless they are just totally uninterested in collecting that data and, you know, uh, making a realization that, oh, you know, people keep skipping this sex scene, you know, if there could just be a convergence of that data... And then some of the liberal, you know, women's groups, you know, that like maybe are really hardcore and they're out there doing protests that, you know, normally a lot of Christians are like, ah, oh, I don't have anything in common with them. If there could somehow be a partnership, a combining of voices on the issue of objectification of women in Hollywood, especially among the liberal left that, you know, largely Hollywood is composed of, if they could just be consistent enough to recognize that this is a left... Uh, a leftish, a leftist issue that uh, they should all get on board with and be preachy about, like they are with all these other things. You know, <laughs> then it would be great to see some kind of movement happen there. But I don't know. That's I just got on a, a, an excited soapbox there. That topic is fresh in my mind. But that is, that is my dream. You know. <laughs> I know people look at me. Um, I've got clients at work that they'll, we kind of talk about different shows that we watch. And I know I've kind of seen it in their faces. They're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. this guy doesn't want to watch a, a sex scene or something like that. I'm just like, I know it. Don't want to watch it. It's, and it's kind of interesting to me. I get that little look. And, um, but I think it's more of a surprise look. Like, oh, oh, you know. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Nathan, I see you kind of, uh, kind of uh, popped in there. Popped uh, did you want to chime in on anything? Maybe you're not really there. I think maybe Nathan is not really there. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, uh, no, I'm here. Oh, you are. I, okay. I, I popped in late. Oh, okay. That's right. Did you want to chime in on anything about the fork in the road or any geek stuff or anything else? Um, just looking at your video, the main things that stuck out uh, were the campfire series. That seemed pretty cool. Okay. Um, I like that idea. And um, uh, the essential issues. Uh, those would be the things I'd be most interested in hearing more of. Okay. Um, but I know my tastes and my times are, are uh, minimal and, and maybe not necessarily normal to the normal person. Usually, Most things for me is... Um, my eye time is limited, but my ear time, uh, I have more time because I have to drive around a lot. Gotcha. Um, so audio options are great. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the uh, uh, A World of Shadows would be number one, the uh, background 
really stuff uh, the archives that would, that, that would be have, my number one that's vote. two of you guys that have surprised me by putting both essential issues and the uh, awas and the, uh, archive, near the, archive near the top so i'm glad so you I'm, I'm glad, glad you, you chimed in i'm glad you chimed in um okay well uh i better uh, wrap this better up wrap is there anything is there anything any, else anybody anything wanted to bring up any bring up? last any questions last or comments or anything comments or anything Any conspiracy theories about who's really running the world behind the scenes? Anybody? Hmm. <laughs> well, always do that to Nathan James Norman. Is, is that Adam? Shifty? Shifty? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Adam. I wouldn't trust me. <laughs> I wouldn't All trust right. me. I have to preach on the uh, in Luke 11 where Jesus condemns the woes to the Pharisees and scribes this mm. weekend because we're going through Luke. So are you gonna say it like that's gonna that's gonna be some fun stuff? Are you gonna say it like Neo? Be, like whoa, like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa to you, scribes and Pharisees! Shout out to whoa, Matrix, Matrix, Matrix Four filming this, uh, filming this uh, January, I think. January. That's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see what. The, I, I don't know how I feel about is. that. I know me either. Is. Yeah. I know me either. <laughs> most most rebooted things that have happened in in. I don't know, the last 10 years I've been sorely disappointed in. Yeah, the nerd in me, uh, is, like in me is like very giggling and excited, excited? but there is a totally is other a totally side other of me side that's of like, me oh that's man, like, oh, this is probably going to be really bad, isn't it? Really bad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to yeah, go ahead and sign, off, ahead and sign off, guys. But thank you so much for so coming much out. For this was cool to have so cool many of you guys like in the same chat environment same at the same time and uh, same time hopefully and, uh, we can get something like this going again either on a, a monthly on a hangout monthly or during extra hangout life or something or like that but this was really cool like but this was really cool you are very, right, well. very well thanks for everything you're doing peter thank you so much my pleasure thank you so much my pleasure all right have a good night guys thanks, thanks guys. Good night. Good night. It is time for Extra Life again, and I'd love for you to be a part of it with me. Here's a recycled but slightly modified promo to tell you more. Once again this year, Christian Geek Central is participating in Extra Life. Uh, this is a charity that raises funds for the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals, which provides free medical care to children whose families could otherwise not afford it. And this is very often for critical, life-saving treatment. Joining our team only requires a willingness to ask your family and friends to consider donating toward your fundraising efforts. Participants also usually do something fun and game-related to draw attention to their fundraising efforts, like a, a special game night at your home or your church, or like me, you could do a crazy 24-hour video gaming marathon. Now, I'm theming it around video games, but really this, this event can be themed around any kind of gaming, which includes both video games and tabletop games of any kind. What you do to raise funds is entirely up to you, but I would love for you to consider joining the Christian Geek Central Extra Life team. Uh, as team leader, I'll be there to help answer your questions, provide some helpful tips if I can, and just in general be your fundraising cheerleader and try to draw attention myself to your fundraising efforts. You can get more information about the event as a whole at Extra extra-life.org uh, and if you choose to sign up there be sure to select Christian Geek Central as your team so I can get in touch with you and then just help in whatever way I can. Fundraising can begin at any time but our main push is going to be through the month of October leading up to November 2nd. Uh, that's the annual Extra Life game day uh, when I'll be streaming my 24 hour video gaming marathon live and trying to stay awake without throwing up. More details on my live stream as we get closer to it. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.